Hey y'all, it's Megan. Welcome back to the channel. Glad y'all are here today. So today's video, we're gonna talk to y'all all about corn. Uh, if you've watched us for any amount of time, you know we plant several varieties of different things, of field corn, popcorn, sweet corn, and we're just gonna kinda give you some tips and tell you what's worked for us, what hadn't worked. Andy is the corn man, so he's gonna tell you all about it. <clears throat> I may be the corn man, but I wouldn't call myself no corn expert. So everything you hear in this video will be from my experience or from our experience and my own personal opinion on things. But I can say that I have grown a lot of corn in my life. But the last probably two to three years, we've learned a whole lot more about corn. And it used to seem so simple as just putting some fertilizer in a row, putting seed in a row and letting it grow. And yeah, typically that's how you do it. But there's a lot of stuff that we've learned over the years of growing corn and different types of corn as to just how, I guess, finicky some varieties of corn can be. Um, so what we're gonna start off with here is sweet corn, which is probably the most popular type of corn somebody's gonna grow in their garden. Um, and that's what we're basically talking about here is like home gardens type corn. We're not talking about big hundreds of acres of field production corn or whatever like that. We're talking about mainly just your home gardens and what you would be growing in your home garden. So this here is honey select corn and the better end is over here because this is something else that I've just noticed really this year. Of course, I know it had to be in full sun, but shade affects corn big time, y'all. So make sure you've got full sun wherever you plant it. I mean, Look at the end of this, the end right here, and then look at that. That only gets morning sun and maybe a little bit of late evening sun. Right now it's it's about, we're like 9.30 in the morning. So as soon as the, tr the sun comes over those trees, all of this will be in full sun, and it's typically in full sun the rest of the day because the sun tracks across the sky like this. But as soon as it gets midday, this end right here is shaded and it's shaded for the rest of the day. And as you can see, I'm pretty sure that's what caused this because the fertilizer and everything was the same all the way through this whole patch of corn. This is honey select corn, which is a sweet corn. And this is one of our favorite varieties of corn. And this whole little patch right here was actually nothing but an experiment this year. Um, so if you don't know much about corn, corn requires some pretty fertile soil to grow. Either you, either you need really fertile soil or you need to put those nutrients in the soil for the corn to grow or else you will not make corn. That's plain and simple. Corn has to have some good, a good fertile ground to grow in. So this was actually yard last year at this time. We tilled it up, done a little experiment, made some, uh, raised the bed up and planted the corn seed in. We have not put any synthetic fertilizer on this at all. This is mainly nothing but chicken manure straight out of our chicken house that we put by this corn. And so far it's looking great. I mean, I am really pleased with the results. The ears are coming. They're looking okay. You know, they're still small, so it's still a little bit too soon to tell how that's going to affect our, our ears and anything, you know, where we just put that fertilizer, I mean, that manure by them. But right now, I'm, I'm very pleased with what we got going on here. So corn is something, like I said, that requires some fertile soil. And corn cannot really handle stress, especially early on in its life. And that's something we've really found out the past two years because we've tried growing corn in some different ground and some different situations, you know, just doing random little experiments and stuff. If you stress that corn out any at all when it's young and it cannot grow, corn grows at a really rapid rate. If it is lacking nutrients or water or anything like that to slow that process down, that corn will be uh, stunted and most likely may not even make you any corn. We've got a perfect example of that down across the creek that we'll go show y'all here a little bit later in the video. But Anyways, this is your most popular variety of something, most popular type of corn that somebody's going to grow in their garden, which is sweet corn. And that's, sweet corn is the type of corn you eat when it's still in the milk stage. Um, you don't let the seed get too old and, and start drying out. 
you pick it in the milk stage when the tassels, which these are your little hairs here, um, when they start turning really dark brown and sort of die back, that's when you know sweet corn is ready to pick. Now, some varieties are different than others. Um, this honey select, I always like to let the tassels completely die back. Um, and some varieties are not quite like that. It just, you kind of play with it. You know, once you get a, an ear that you think starting to be ready, you can pick it, pull the ear, pull it back. If it's not ready, you know, don't go through and pick the whole thing. Just pick one or two ears and check them out. But anyways, you let this stay in the milk stage and eat it while it's still soft. Whereas field corn, you let completely dry, like it'll dry on the stalk, the stalks turn brown, and you pick it when it's dry. And you store it like in a, uh, you know, you, you shell the kernel off the cob and store it that way. Where this, you can either eat it on the cob, boiled, or however, or grilled, however you want to fix it, or cut it off the cob to make like sweet corn. So we'll walk over here to our next corn patch and We've got one, two, three. We've got four patches of corn planted this year. And two patches are sweet corn, two patches are field type corn. Now this next patch that's over here and actually in our garden, this is typically where we grow our sweet corn, but um, I switched things up this year and planted popcorn over here. I love to grow my own popcorn. I love eating popcorn. And if you've never grown your own popcorn, I highly recommend it if you've got uh, the room to do it. Because just like anything else out of the garden, the popcorn tastes better too. So if you're like me and love to eat popcorn, this is something you really need to have in your own garden. But before we get started on this, I'm gonna show y'all something that I've never seen before. Out of all the years of growing corn, this particular corn stalk has one, two, three, four, five, six ears of corn coming out on that one stalk. Now, all six of these ears most likely won't make an ear of corn. They'll probably be the top two up here and then these on down farther will not be quite as filled out. But I have never in my life seen a corn stalk have six ears of corn. That's unheard of to me. The most I've ever seen was three. And there's several of these corn, uh, corn stalks through here that's actually got three on them. But this is Japanese Hollis popcorn. It's an heirloom variety. Now something we have noticed with these heirloom varieties is they require, at least in our experience, require a lot less nutri nutrients in the soil than your hybrid varieties like the um, Honey Select up here, the Honey Select sweet corn. And I've noticed that with the field corn as well. It's like you can grow some good looking field corn with very little fertilizer in some poor soil and it'll make good corn. That's only with the heirloom varieties though. It seems like the hybrid varieties require a lot more nutrients. But here's something you see too with the heirloom varieties. Now I've seen this in the field corn. This is my first year of growing this Japanese Hullis popcorn. We were growing a hybrid variety, but they call this tassel ears. And you see that? It's trying to make a little corn cob up here at the top of the tassel, which that's a short plant. It's actually a little sucker plant to come off of that one, and it's probably stressed or something. And I've done a little bit of research on this one time, and it seems that stuff like this comes from the corn plant being stressed. Um, so as you can see, that was a shaded out plant, so that's probably why it done that. Every single one of these little short plants are doing that. Right there's one that's trying to, it's not quite as obvious, but it did try to make kernels on the tassel up here. But Anyways, this is popcorn. This is a field type of corn. This corn right here, I will let stand here till it's completely dead and these these ears are dry. You'll take, once you once they're dry, I'm sure there'll be a video coming up in the future on it. We'll uh, pull them off and shuck them and lay them out somewhere to completely finish drying and then we'll uh, shell it and put the popcorn up probably in a, and store it in a freezer or however you want to do it, an airtight container. And we'll have popcorn for, I don't know, this right here will probably give us enough popcorn for two or three years, really. But um, we do, we like to grow popcorn. It's one of my favorite things to do is grow popcorn as like a, and grow your own snacks. But 
before we walk away from this field, I mean, this popcorn here, I want to do want to mention that on the pack, Japanese Hullus says that it only grows five feet tall. Now, I don't know if y'all can tell or not, but I'm right at five nine. And this corn is way taller than five feet tall. I don't know what happened. I really hope that it is actually Japanese Hullus popcorn because, I mean, it was a popcorn seed that I put in the ground. But goodness, which now this is some. We've done a lot of work to this soil in this garden, so I mean, it's some pretty good soil, but still, when you get on out here towards the center, look at this. That's as high as I can reach, and I've still got another two foot to get to the top of the tassel. That is crazy. That blows my mind. I've never seen that before, with popcorn especially. Popcorn is typically a shorter corn. It usually never gets that tall, so... I'm interested to see just how good this turns out. But um, like I said, I highly recommend you plant some popcorn if you like popcorn. You know, popcorn's a good snack. When you when you grow popcorn and it's nothing but popcorn, it doesn't have all that stuff added to it and the butters and everything, or what, whoever, who knows what they put on popcorn you buy in the store. I'm sure they make Roundup Ready popcorn. They make Roundup Ready every other kind of corn. That's one thing we don't plant is any type of Roundup Ready corn. I'm not going to fool with it. But when you grow it like this and you sit down, I mean, that's a good, I, I mean, I'd consider it a good healthy snack. Something that you don't, you can probably eat however much you want to of it and it's not really going to hurt you. But anyways, I highly recommend planting you a crop of popcorn. Um, like if nothing else, just as a novelty type thing. Get your kids out here to go pick it, shell it, let them pop it they'll enjoy it before we head down to the creek i just happen to think there's something i want to add in here about corn because this is tasseled out across the creek isn't them tassels up there have these little you can see the stuff fall off of them there those fall down that's the pollen and it falls down to these tassels right here and the pollen has to zoom in on that one right there. You can see all the little pollen dust on those little tassels there. Each single one of those tassels represents a kernel on that ear. So the pollen has to fall down on each one of those tassels and that's what makes your kernels. So that being said, corn needs to be planted. You can't just have a single row of corn. I mean, you can have a single row of corn. Chances are you're not going to get good pollination if you do that. Um, so you need to have at least three rows of corn, in my opinion. I have grown it with two rows of corn and been just fine, but one single row of corn really won't cut it. You need it because pollen from this plant, if the wind's blowing, will most likely fall over here to this plant. So the thicker you have your rows and your spacing and everything else, the more pollen you're going to get to fall. Now, in turn, you have to have enough spacing for that corn to make itself too so you know there's like a fine line there um but you got to have at least two rows minimum but you're better off with at least three rows to get perfect pollination on your corn um and so think about it like this if the wind's coming in here on the particular day that this is that all your pollen's dropping and the wind's coming in from this way all that pollen's going this way, so all the corn over here is going to be getting the pollen where this down here won't be getting quite as much. And you can actually see, now there is pollen on these. They all look like they've got pollen on them. However, there's not near as much pollen on this outside row as it is on over here. You can actually see the pollen laying on the leaf of the corn over here. I mean, it's, it's thick on there. But that's just something I wanted to mention before we head down there because that down there is not tasseled out. So... I wouldn't be able to explain it as well. That's something to keep in mind when you go to plant your corn. All right, so this right here was our experiment this year. To where we had crimson clover planted on pretty much the whole garden spot 
except for where these three rows of corn are right here. This was our uh, salad patch over the winter, and then there was nothing really as far as a cover crop on this, on just this little section over the winter. From here over was some of the prettiest crimson clover you've ever seen. So what we learned from this, if you remember watching the video where we planted this corn, I think we talked about the fact that we weren't going to fertilize any of this and we were just using the crimson clover as our nitrogen fixing cover crop and putting it back into the soil and everything and that was going to be our fertilizer. Well, that worked. But we had this little section right here that didn't have no fertilizer and I just wanted to see what it would do as a test plot. Well, chances are we're probably not going to get the first year of corn off of this and I'm going to show you why. Because of this corn, this corn has actually been planted just as long, just about as long as that first patch of uh, Honey Select we showed you in the beginning of the video. There may be like a week or two part there, but not much difference in all the time. And you can see just how short this corn is. Look right here. Y'all see that? That tassel coming out on that corn that's that short? That corn's not going to make any corn. What happened was where this didn't have fertilizer on it, it stunted this corn so bad in the beginning that it just didn't grow. And corn has a certain amount of days that it's going to grow and then it's going to start shooting a tassel. If it don't grow the amount it's supposed to grow in those certain in that in those number of days, it's not going to make anything. It's going to shoot tassel at, at a really I mean a really short height, and once it does that, it's it's done. It's not going to do anything. So I'm about sure that we are not going to get the first year of corn off of this serendipity corn we have planted here. Had this been heirloom corn, I would about bet you we'd have had a pretty corn crop down here. But these hybrid varieties of sweet corn seem to be a lot more finicky on their care and everything like they can't get stressed at all and this is disappointing because i was really wanting to try this serendipity corn so i'm curious if maybe i might have time to get in a late corn crop this year i really don't know i've actually considered plowing this up and starting over but i don't know we'll see about that all right this crop here was planted Oh, has it been a month now, maybe? It's been about a month ago. And I went ahead and fertilized this when I planted. And I've actually top dressed it again since I, since I planted it. But we need a little shower of rain because we had not had any rain at all since I top dressed it. And we don't have no irrigation or nothing like that down here. But this corn is looking a lot better. This corn is growing at the rate it's supposed to grow. And everything is looking good. This here is Honey Select as well, which, like I said earlier, that's our favorite variety. And so that's what we plant the most of. So the shade factor comes into effect down here on this as well. See how short all this corn is? Well, it's shaded out by that tree and, and late in the evening so it don't get near the sun as this section right out here does. But I will say that this corn suffered some stress early on as well where it didn't have fertilizer. It just had the crimson clover cover crop and I kind of wish now that I would have just went ahead and fertilized it in the beginning maybe not use as much fertilizer but give it something um, but I have since top dressed this and done all that and it's looking better it's looking better but it's still not near as tall as it should have been and it's already shooting tassel over here um, you can see um, that one ain't quite come out yet. Right here's one. See, that one's starting to shoot a tassel up here, but look right here. There's where your co your co your uh, cobs are going to come out, and you'll have your ear of corn right there, those two. So chances are we'll get corn off of most of this, especially out here on this end where it's taller. But what I'm trying to say is this whole experiment here was a way to try to get corn without having to use fertilizer. Just to know if we could do it had uh we done this a couple years in a row and really had this land built up really good which this down here is actually some pretty good land we usually have a pretty good garden down here but we've always used fertilizer on it of some kind had we known what i know now i'd have probably just went ahead and fertilized it but just so i could have got this corn up and growing like when that corn seed sprouts it needs to have something there so it grows you can't just let it sit there. 
if that corn seed sits there and sprouts and just kind of does not grow, you better get something around it real fast to make it grow, to have the nutrients it needs, or else it's just going to be stunted and chances are you're not going to have nothing. Corn can get stressed later on in life. Like if it turns dry after it reaches this height and starts to crinkle up and stuff, that will affect the corn, but not near as bad as getting stressed when it's young. It cannot be stressed when it's young. But anyways, this whole little patch right here and that patch over there was nothing but an experiment that um, we learned a lot from. Like I said, I'd, I've never planted this much corn in this bottom before either. So the middle of the garden is looking to be the better spot to grow it because that corn is a whole lot more even across there because the middle of this garden gets a lot more sun. Whereas this is so much taller on this end and out on that end, pan around there and show them. Like you can see the major height difference in this. And I'm pretty sure that's from just the lack of sun because as the sun tracks across the sky, it starts losing later in the evening it starts losing sun on that end because of those trees right there so like i said nothing but one big experiment here that i know next time most likely i'm just going to fertilize my corn because i like corn and i hate to plant this much corn and not get no corn out of it <laughs> so anyways the next corn patch we have is our field corn which is a uh, the uh we got hickory king and we got some jimmy red planted up there and we'll take you up there next and show you that and everything up there is looking pretty good but there's some major stuff look at here well, that's been laying in there a while there's some uh crazy stuff up there i want to show you with that heirloom field corn i mean it it grows totally different than your typical varieties like your gmo varieties of uh, field corn they grow you know most commercial farmers grow now but we'll take you up there here in a few minutes you see this fencing and stuff around the uh, corn here if you want to check it out we'll link a video link the video we made of how we keep the deer and the coons out of our corn and otherwise without this fencing system we would not have corn growing down here the deer and the coons would demolish it and it would be one big waste of time without this fence we'll hook the power back up and we will head up a hill. So y'all, last but not least, this is our field corn patch. And when it comes to field corn, I have really been impressed with all the heirloom varieties. They, for us, seem to do so much better than your hybrid varieties and your, I mean, like I said, I'm not even gonna grow the GMO varieties, but um, they just seem to do so much better and grow so much better grow so much more vigorously they even grow taller so it's almost like we don't have and i'll show you what i mean but it's almost like we don't have the deer pressure on this corn because the, the the corn cobs are so high on the plant but i say that now that this year our deer deer probably eat our corn crop up or something but in the past that seems to be the case so this little patch right here is just five rows of Hickory King white corn. And I planted it basically for nothing but seed because y'all probably saw an earlier video of us planting this corn and we've done another experiment. We mixed Jimmy Red and Hickory King corn seed together so they can cross pollinate each other and potentially create our own hybrid. Um, so I planted this later with the intentions and it may or may not work but i'm hoping that this is done tasseled out and everything is done over here by the time this starts to tassel so there is no cross pollination that's the plan i hope there's enough of a window between the two that that works so as we walk out to our corn patch here i just want to say something real quick Typically, they want they say it's something crazy like a mile or maybe even more than a mile before corn cannot cross pollinate, like the chance of corn cross pollinating because the wind blows the pollen. So, with that being said, if our neighbor's corn over here was tasseling at the same time as our corn, which you can see right there, um, there is the potential that that corn could cross over here with our corn. Um, 
and you would know it you would know it this year when we go to pick it if we had like yellow kernels or something like that in this corn it would have come from his corn over here i honestly in my experience have never seen corn cross when it when it's that far apart but they say it can happen so you know just remember that when you go to plant your corn if you're dead set you don't want no cross pollination you need to be in some way or another secluded from any other corn that you go to plant that doesn't typically bother me as bad because you know I, I, like i said i've never seen it happen um that far away but it can happen so walk out into this corn here now this is some of the poorest ground that we grow stuff on it, it is awful up here we're trying we haven't owned this piece of land but um two to three years maybe no, it may be longer than that now but we've really just been planting on it the last two years so we're working on that we've been cover cropping it in the winter time and just doing what we can to to make it better but you know to add like we've done at home adding wood chips and leaves and stuff like that this is this particular field right here is over an acre and to add that much into an acre field is just impossible for us because we don't have the means to get that much material to add out onto the field. But first thing that you'll probably notice about this corn versus a, a different, like your more modern type field corns, is the stalk. Now these are not good examples here. These are, this one's a decent one. But look at how big around that stalk is. And it's already put out one set of brace roots right here. That's what you call the brace roots. Those are not, I mean, they do do some nutrient gathering, I think, but they are not your actual corn roots. These are brace roots, and it shoots them down to help hold that stalk sturdy. Right here at this node, there'll probably be another set of brace roots that come out right here. Um, well, right here's, a, right here's one coming out. See those brace roots right there? And if you fill of them, they're a little bit sticky and this is something i didn't know till here just recently but those things will um have like a sugary type stuff that drips out of them and goes back to the ground and helps feed this corn i had never heard of that and i learned that on a youtube video the other day and so when we come up here and felt the virus and they were sticky you could tell like they had like a sugary substance on them i was that was something completely new to me but we'll walk out in this corn here and look at how tall this particular stalk is well, that thing's up there um once again i mean it's, it's probably it's a little bit taller than our popcorn is at home but now all of it you'll notice all of it's not like that last year it was this year it's not but we've had some kind of finicky weather on this corn and so i'm assuming that's probably got a little bit to do with it but um this is just something you're not going to see on these modern day varieties of corn is a stalk like that right there. Of course, they plant the corn a lot closer together too. Like in these modern hybrid varieties, I mean modern, like your Roundup Ready corn. Shoot, your corn's going to be planted that close to each other. You wouldn't be able to walk between the rows from row to row. It's planted so thick. You can't do that with these heirloom field corns. They have to have enough room to grow that big stalk and make a stalk because if not where they grow so tall if they don't have that big sturdy stalk the wind comes it'll just flatten them on the ground you but you've got to have that at least eight to twelve inches between each uh plant of corn So one thing we do like to do, this has not got much to do with corn, but something we like to do is if we have a place in the cornfield where, especially a field corn variety, because this will stay here till pretty much frost before we harvest it. If we have a spot that didn't come up, we'll plant us some winter squash in there and let them run out in with the corn. And right here we have another one. And we have them, but we have them. We have them scattered all through this cornfield. It actually needs a shower of rain. I can start to see the the leaves. See how that leaf is twisting up? Um, that's a sign that it's already starting to stress from. You know, it's needing some water. Um, so we have a chance of rain. Maybe we'll get a some this season. But there's one particular stalk of corn out here that just stands out above all the rest. Look at this thing. 
Now, if my whole cornfield was like this one, we'd have something. But this thing is that has got one, two, three ears of corn that we're going to try to make right there. And it stands, goodness, that thing's probably 13 foot tall, isn't it? That thing is tall. And down here around the base, you can see it's brace roots. It's done shot out here. Um, but that's a good looking stalk of corn. So what I'll do is keep my eye on this one. And as long as the ears look good on this stalk of corn, this one will definitely be one that I want to keep seed from. This is what I was talking about with the ears being taller on this corn see how high those ears are so most deer cannot reach these ears when they go to eat it unless they tear the corn stalk down which could happen but chances of it happening are very slim because the deer is most likely just going to walk by it and not bother it and so coons around here are typically a bad a, you know a bad predator to our corn and they can't reach that so they would have to tear the corn down to get to it but like i said last year we didn't have that problem but a lot of it is that tall now we have some this little section right through here on this field is what i've noticed so far is some very 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 poor land so you know i think that's got a lot to do with why this is shorter but as we get on down in the field the the, the ground becomes a lot better and we start having some better looking corn here's some more pumpkins and squash we've got planted i can't remember these may be pumpkins but guys look at this one right here that's a good looking stalk of corn it hadn't tasseled yet either and it's already it's already pretty daggone tall So if you're wondering why we plant field corn, we use it for many different things. We grow, uh, y'all obviously probably know, we grow pigs and chickens and cows and whatever. And we like to use this as part of our, our, our animal feed. And we also use it for our cornmeal and stuff like that. We'll grind us, you know, we'll keep some of the really pretty ears and shell them out and grind that for our cornmeal and stuff that we use and this is not something you have to have on your homestead this is just something i like to fool with um and i, I really enjoy growing um you know so if you've got the room and the acres to do it or whatever but you can grow a small patch if all you want to do is grow say for like some cornmeal or something like that you can grow you a small patch we're in zone 7a here in north carolina where we're at and we can get one field corn crop in in a year, and if you time it right, you can get two sweet corn crops on the same patch in a year. And I don't recommend planting sweet corn behind each other unless you have a crop that failed like what we have. Then you just tear it up and go back and replant it. But um, you've got enough time that if all you had was one plot to grow your uh, sweet corn in, you've got enough time if you plant that corn early enough in the year, you can harvest it. And then go back with a second crop and harvest it again before frost. And we have done it. And that's how I know we can be done. We have done it. Um, but field corn, you're just going to get one crop per year off of that plot. And, you know, this is usually an all year long crop. Well, this was planted right after Easter, I think. And it will be harvested sometime in the neighborhood of our first frost. It, it Depending on how quick it dries, we may get it before the first frost. Because I do like to get a cover crop sowed on this after the corn's gone. So you have to have time for that cover crop to do its thing too before it gets too cold. But anyways, that's why we grow field corn. It's just something I'll, that we both like to fool with here. and It's a lot of work to pick, but it is fun. We pick it all by hand. But that's something else, like I said, that just when it comes to corn, that... These heirloom varieties seem to do so much better in our poor soil. I would about bet you that if I'd have planted some of that honey select sweet corn up here with no more fertilizer than what this corn has had on it, it had the cover crop and then it had very little when we planted it. And I have not added no more to this uh, field of corn. I would about guarantee you that honey select would be like what we've got down there across the creek and it wouldn't have really made anything. It would have been real short and just no good. 
Whereas this these heirloom varieties, for whatever reason, just seem to me do better in poor soils. Um, if we'd have had some really good soil here, shoot, this stuff would have probably been even way taller than what it is right now, and all of it would have been that way. But so far, that's what well, that's one of the main things I've noticed between the heirlooms and the hybrids. Um, if this were like your GMO corn or whatever, gosh, they load that stuff up with different types of fertilizers and there, nitrogen and whatever. They go through and and have fertilizer down when they plant it. Then they go back and top dress it with fertilizer. Then they go back again, a lot of times, and plant and put more fertilizer out. And they just throw it to it. And that not only is using chemical fertilizer. We won't even get into what chemical fertilizers do to your soil, but we have to use them or else we wouldn't have anything. But not only that, the cost of it gets unbelievable because fertilizer is not cheap. And that's one good thing about these heirloom varieties. We save our own seed. We never have to buy another bag of seed. I heard a guy tell me the other day that he bought a bag of field corn seed, a 50-pound bag, and it was like $750. And that was like, what? <laughs> we can get a 50-pound bag off of just like one or two rows here. And we don't even, I mean, you, we planted this whole patch here with, with like a quarter of a five-gallon bucket. And it was all seed that we saved. So the only real money we have in this corn is the couple of bags of fertilizer that went by it when I planted it. And then the time invested in taking care of it. Now, you do have to cultivate this field corn. Now, you can't go through and spray like them boys do with the Roundup Ready corn. But anyways, I don't know if you learned anything or not. I hope I didn't ramble too much about all this corn. I love to talk about corn. And I'm sure there's something in this video that I didn't say that I should have said. And I remember after the video, oh man, I should have mentioned that. But um, stay tuned and you'll see what kind of uh, land race variety we get out of this corn right here. Because like I said, this is Jimmy Red and Hickory King corn planted together. So we should have a corn that's got some white kernels. And they may not be red. They're probably more like a purple. But we'll see. I'm very interested in saying that's something else I like about corn. It's like opening a bunch of Christmas presents when you go to open it up. You never know what you got till you open back, pull back that shut. But anyways, corn is a big part of our history. And a lot of people badmouth corn. And I know why they badmouth corn. Because of the newer stuff, that the way corn's grown now. And it's just like a, everything nowadays revolves around corn there's corn syrup corn this corn that and everything and honestly i i don't agree with the way the modern way of growing corn but you know according to what they say we got to have it to feed the world i don't know but anyways if in my opinion if you've got you a small homestead if all you've got is just a few animals just to feed you and your family and you're not trying to do nothing on some kind of big commercial basis or whatever you can grow enough corn to supplement feed your animals and never ever have to go to the feed store and buy your your corn to feed your animals so something to think about if you've got the room to do it now this patch of corn here we've got is not all that our animals get fed because it would take a lot more for the amount of animals we've got but it does make a big dent on our feed bill when we come when it comes time to go to feeding and, and buying corn and whatnot to feed our animals so it's just something fun that we like to mess with and i hope y'all learned a little something like i said i hope i didn't get to rambling too much and anyways we really appreciate y'all watching i hope you enjoyed the corn video and if you like seeing corn videos let us know because I, I love to talk about corn but um anyways we will catch y'all on the next one